Good morning. Welcome to worship on this day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we are gathering here this morning in the home of our Heavenly Father, we know whenever we are in our parents' house, we are home. So whether this is the first time you've ever been with us or if you've been gathering with us for years, welcome home, everyone. Uh, just a little bit of a disclaimer. If it gets a little bit warm in here today, one of our air conditioning units is being temperamental today. So uh, one is working and hopefully it's going to keep us cool, but if it does start to warm up because we've got some bodies in here, just be aware that's why that's going on. Uh, we'll be celebrating Holy Communion today. Uh, we'll do that in a continuous fashion as we normally do, just coming forward, communion at the front of the aisle and returning by the side aisle. Uh, we'll get the wafers from me and either the clear juice or the red wine uh, from the deacon, dropping our cups into the holy garbage can as we go on through there. Uh, before we do kick things off, though, it's summertime, which means the 4th of July is coming. <laughs> so Nancy is going to give her 4th of July. Yeah. Yeah. What, what 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 description should we do it? Your your spiel? Yeah. Spiels are fun. Okay. I think my last spiel. Your last spiel. <laughs> I don't know. Pretty sure. Here you go. Good morning. Good morning. All you lovely volunteers. <laughs> well, if you don't know about the Fourth of July celebration up here, we have, and it's a wonderful thing, you know, lots of people, and it's fun, and we love, we need help though. You know, in the kitchen. We just can't do it without help. And so if you could work for two hours, which is not bad. It's, it's when you get stuck all day, it's not so good. <laughs> right, right? Yeah. Two hours isn't bad. And I really, really would appreciate it. You can fill out. I've got some names on here, but we need more. We need some more, like at the beginning, before the parade, a couple of people to help. And you can see here, it only, we're going to close it at 3. We're closing earlier than we used to because we have a food truck and some other stuff. So if I pass this around, please think about it and please fill it out if you can. Just give us, and then there's a, on the back is a deal for pies. We still do the pies, so if you feel like donating a pie, that'd be great. With that, I'll invite you to go ahead and get up out of our seats and we'll join together in our first hymn. Yeah.
we know that there are those things in our lives that stand in the way of our relationship with our Maker. And so now I invite you to attend our mutual confession as we join together in the brief order found on page 56 in our hymnals. We gather together today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment now for personal reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's join in reading responsibly from Psalm 8 as printed in your bulletin. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You, you whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of the infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. Right into your hands, the words of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in your courses. What are mere mortals that you are mindful of them, human beings that you should care about them? Yet you have made them little less than mine, with the glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All oh, hogs and cattle, even the hunter beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh, Lord, our Lord. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God. You are author of creation, eternal word of salvation, and life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
morning. morning. Our first reading today comes from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 and 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Besides the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, and the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago I was set up. At the first, before the beginning of the earth, then there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. When he had not yet made the earth and fields for the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made the firm skies above, when he established the fountains of deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, and when I was beside him like a master worker, and I was his daily delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in this inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. The second reading today comes from Romans 5, chap chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to grace in which we stand, and we can boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Here is the reading. We got a fair number of kiddos out there. Kid, you want to come up? Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? Good. Are you good? Yeah? If I told you guys that we have one God who is three different people, what would you say? Not, but it's weird, right? Like, how can one person be three people? Isn't it weird? Yeah. Think about it this way, though. Um, yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Whenever I think about this idea that we have one God that's three people, it, I kind of scratch my head a little bit. But I think about it this way. So, what do you guys, do you guys know what my name is? What's my name? Pastor Scott. Pastor Scott. Okay, so you guys know me as Pastor, right? You don't know me? <laughs> I can't come back. So you guys know me as, as Pastor Scott. So I'm pastor, and I work here in this church, and that's 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 who I am, right? Yeah. Do you guys know that I'm also a dad? That I, that I have a couple of kids? Yeah. So that means to them, I'm, I'm dad, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm Pastor Scott, but I'm, I'm also dad, right? Yeah, okay. Do you know that I also, I have, I have a brother and a sister? So what does that make me to them? I'm their brother, right? Okay, so so I'm I'm a brother, and I'm also a dad, and I'm also Pastor Scott. And I'm I'm all three of those things, right? And does does any does me being a dad make me any less of a brother? No. Does it make me any more of a brother? No. no. And does does it make me any more of a pastor or any less of a pastor no. to be those things? No. It's okay. So do you see how? How I have different 
different things that people know me as, different identities. Uh, and, and so that's kind of like God, kind of, sort of. I mean, that's weird, right? It's all kind of weird. Kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it is. But what I really want you guys to know, so we have God who made everything, God the creator, God our father. And then we have Jesus, who's God's son. And then we have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And they're all three God. And even though it's kind of strange and maybe hard to understand, and it is, what I want you guys to remember is that all three love you. Okay? That's the takeaway. That no matter what form God shows up in, God loves us. Yeah? Yeah. And I want you guys to remember that. Should we say a prayer? Okay. Dear Lord, we thank you that you love us more than anything and that you desire for us to know that. Help us always to remember that and to hold on to that truth in our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up, everybody. gospel lesson for today, Holy Trinity Sunday, comes from John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. Jesus says to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, and for this reason I have said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. <coughs> well, people of God, may the grace and peace of our triune God be yours today and forever. Amen. A lot of you out there know that I am a gamer. I grew up playing video games. I've played them for a lot of years, and I've played a lot of different types of games. But there's one that came out about four or five years ago that I was thinking about this week. This game is called Journey. That's just the name of it. And different than a lot of games out there that will take you hours and hours and hours and hours to complete, this one's actually really short. It only takes you a couple hours to finish it. So you can knock it out in the afternoon if that's what you feel like doing. And it's the premise of this game is really, really simple. As it starts, you see that there, you're this just this little weird shaped humanoid character. And you're standing at the bottom of the mountain. And over the course of playing this game, you have to get to the top of the mountain. That's the entire premise. You're trying to get to the top of the mountain. And as you go along, you have to figure out what direction to go. And can, sometimes there's little puzzles that you have to figure out in order to continue moving. And then every once in a while, as you're going along, another one of these weird little characters comes in. And you kind of interact with each other a little bit, and you do some stuff together, and then pretty soon they kind of disappear, and you're on your own again, and you go a little bit farther along, and then pretty soon they pop up again. There's, there's another one of those little people that's kind of come along beside you, and, and this happens several times over the course of the game. Now, what I didn't know when I was playing the game is that those little characters that come in beside you are actually other people playing the game. It kind of drops this on you at the end, that you, you, you come together, and that's the way it's designed. It's designed to bring you together, you spend some time together, and then you kind of go your separate ways. And it's, I found it to be kind of a beautiful realization that this wasn't just some little computer-generated character. I was actually interacting with another person during this time as I was on this journey. Well, maybe you see where I'm going with this. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, which, as I just talked with the kids, is utterly confusing. And I am not going to try and explain to you what the Holy Trinity means and how it works. There are much smarter people than I who have tried to do that and have failed miserably, so the Holy Trinity is a mystery. Let's just leave it at that. One God, three persons. But where we have in this short little snippet of, of gospel reading today is part of a larger teaching of Jesus that happens at the Last Supper. It's a long period that happens just before his, his betrayal and his arrest and his death. And in this entire time, Jesus is trying to assure the disciples that even though things are about to change dramatically for them, 
they are not going to be left alone. They have spent the time together with Jesus, and then when he departs, they will be empowered with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will be with them. Now we hear it's called the Spirit of Truth, and that as this time goes on, as they continue through their ongoing journey of life, and their ongoing journey of, of faith, and their ongoing journey of discipleship, that the Spirit of Truth will continue to reveal new things to them which I really, really appreciate. Jesus is reminding them, and I think reminding us, that you won't just stay stuck. You won't just stay static in one place. Like, oh, I've got it now, and now I never need to learn anything new. No, God will continue to teach them. And that God will continue to teach us, and unite us, and connect us. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. Now, if you happen to be around last week, you know, last week was the, was the day of Pentecost. And on that day, we celebrate or we remember the arrival of the Holy Spirit and how it empowers the earliest church and begins to connect them and, and give them spiritual gifts that they use to expand the church. And today, I can't help but think, almost feels like Day of Pentecost Part Two. It's almost like a sequel because we're still sort of focusing in on the Holy Spirit there. But that's important because it is the Holy Spirit that empowers us to be the church and that connects us and brings us together as we go through this journey of life that we entail. But thinking about all of this, I guess I am thinking about the Holy Trinity just a little bit, and the way that we have one God that's three people, which is very, very strange to understand, but I think that reveals to us that we have a God that exists in relationship, somehow. And that that same God made us bearing the divine image, and that's why we also need relationship. That's why we need one another, and we're connected to one another, and we're brought together with one another for periods of our lives, for seasons of our lives, by that power of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's interesting, this idea of relationship and togetherness and, and the way that we are brought together so that we might somehow model that relationship with God. Now, I'm thinking about something. I actually heard this a week ago, and, and this was at a seminary graduation, so it, it might be up here, but it's kind of funny. One of the professors up there was talking about the Holy Trinity, and I'm going to have to put the microphone down here in just a second because it's going to require both hands. But So we have one God and three people, and they do something called a parochreatic dance. <laughs> she literally did that during graduation, and I about fell in my chair last but it's this idea that we have a God that is in harmony within God's self. One God and three people. Confusing, weird. But it's the dance of existence, and it's the dance of life, and it's the dance of connection. It's all of these things that go way beyond our ability to comprehend or understand. But maybe, just maybe, we get a little tiny glimmer of that when we think about the ways that our lives intertwine with one and that dance that we do together, whether it's a literal dance, and hey, if you don't like dancing, you should. <laughs> I don't know where that just came from, but. <laughs> or if it's just the life that we lead together. This life that we lead in this world that God has made, redeemed somehow through the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are empowered by that same Holy Spirit to be a part of that and to be a part of that together. May we hold on to that as we do that dance. <laughs> Sorry, now I'm stuck on that dance. But may we hold on to that as we live this life together, supporting one another, empowering one another, being there for one another in the good and the bad, because that's what it means to be the church that God has called us to be. Amen. Hey, that's pretty good for what I just handed out, right? <laughs> It just crossed there, I saw it. And Nancy is the fourth member of the Trinity. <laughs> That's probably a heresy, forget I just said that. <laughs>
neglect our offering, a few announcements to share. Uh, just a reminder, uh, Council will be meeting this one on Wednesday evening, 6.30. So that's coming up on our agenda. Uh, also, a week from today, next Sunday, we will also be celebrating Holy Communion, but that's kind of a normal week. You know, today we're celebrating uh, as a switch from last week, but we'll be back into our regular schedule again next week. Then two weeks from now, on the 26th, a uh, reminder that we are planning on having an outdoor worship out on the lawn, weather permitting. Uh, if it's uh, not so great outside, we'll just come inside, but uh, if it all comes together well, we will plan on having worship out on the lawn and enjoy that time together. I also want to point out um, the operations committee met last week, and we are shifting our focus into our next sort of external fundraising effort. Uh, we know over the last few months, if you're aware, we've had a couple of different property projects that we have been working on fundraising. That's gone very, very well. So uh, now uh, we are looking towards uh, meeting our congregational benevolence, the way the, the giving that we as a congregation do outwardly. So uh, since it's summertime, we thought it's camp season. This is where the Bible camps are active. So the first one that we're looking at is our support, uh, our pledge support for the Ingamoka Boji Lutheran Bible Camp. That's our Civic Bible Camp. It's only $500. It's really not an overly large amount, but we're going to start with that. And once that one is completed, we're actually going to turn our attention towards the Bethany Foundation and the Bethany Lutheran Home down in Council Bluffs, of which we are a sponsoring congregation. Uh, and that total for, for that one is uh, $1,300. So over the course of the next couple of months, we're looking at about $1,800 that we're going to try and raise and give away. So uh, if you would like to be a part of that outside of our regular giving here to the church, uh, you can designate that, that to outreach. That would be one way of doing it if you drop it off here at the church. Or if you use our online giving uh, of Vanco, if you place it in the evangelism outreach category, it will be shifted towards that direction. So just be aware that those are going on. With that, I will now invite the congregation to rise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now join in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated, the table is prepared, and all are welcome to join in the Lord's Supper.
authorized shed for you. Great moment, Adam, in the midst of all that. Which maybe, if we're used to things, it seems just something we do kind of knowledge. But when a little guy's kid, the same guy who told me he didn't know me. He got his way through, he just kind of looked at it. One of the other little guys says, You eat it. <laughs> and it was beautiful, it was just beautiful. I love it. And so if I'm smiling here and here, that's why. I've got the congregation to rise. So. <laughs> May the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I the congregation to join now in the prayers of the church. Lord in heaven, on this day in which you have made, we gather our hearts and minds together, connected through the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gift of the community and the opportunity to be together for worship. Keep us connected with all of the body of Christ throughout the world and strengthen each of us, empowering us to be your hands and feet. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for the promise of Christ that we are never left alone. Remind us of this truth in times of trouble and heartache. Likewise, we thank you for the way that your spirit continues to guide and lead us, revealing new things to each of us as we are able to receive it. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Spirit of God, we pray today for those who are in need of your healing touch. We ask that you would be present with any who are suffering in any way, whether it is physical or spiritual or emotional. We ask for healing for those who are sick, and those who are recovering from medical procedures. We pray for any whose mental well-being is a struggle, they would find peace, and we remember those who are mourning the loss of loved ones that they would be comforted. Today we remember especially Janet and Galen, Lily, Karen, Maisie, and any others that we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, here in the summer months, we are aware of the potential for hazardous weather and storms. We ask that you would watch over all people and be present where there is trouble. We pray for those who are being affected by the tremendous heat in the western parts of our country, and we are mindful of the potential that we will also experience in the next few days. We pray for any around the world who are experiencing the power of nature. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God, of all people, we pray for any who have been made to suffer at the hands of another. Help each of us to live our lives in a way that reflects your peace and common dignity for one another, and help us to stand with those who have been harmed. We remember especially the victims and families of recent gun violence, which has been so prevalent in recent weeks. We also remember the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and the people who have been displaced by that violence. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, we, <clears throat> we pray for any who are serving in positions of leadership and authority. Give them hearts of service regardless of the level or the position in which they lead. Grant wisdom and care of their dealings. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, we pray for any who find themselves lacking the resources which they need. We 
we know that this feels even more poignant in a time when financial matters continue to be difficult. Give us courage and endurance during these times and help those who have more than they need to provide for those who are lacking. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Finally, Lord, we pray today for those who do not know you. May the gospel of Christ continue to move throughout the world and touch the hearts of all people so that one day all may come to faith. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is this your clipboard? <laughs>